Not taking advantage of 401k or 403b is one of the biggest mistakes that many young people make when they're first starting out in the workforce or as they transition to a new job. And an easy way to... It, it, the a 401k is an easy way to start investing to kind of dip your toe in and get your feet wet especially if you haven't started off by investing in a Roth like I recommend people do as soon as they turn 18. Uh, another way of looking at 401ks and 403bs is investing with training wheels because it gives you all the experience that you would need, but without clouding it, uh, without overwhelming you with a bunch of information. As a for instance, okay, um, you can put into practice what I've been talking about in some of my other videos where I talk about 12% uh, being available in the market um, because... In a 401k or a 403b, you have limited options. That's where my training wheels analogy comes from. Usually you can only invest in about 20 to 40 uh, different funds or stocks. For instance, my wife uh, has been working for 30 years. Her company only offers 26 investment choices through her 401k. There... Typically, your 401k will also have a kind of a simplified interface since you're not worrying about stocks and or, uh, uh, bonds and CDs and futures and things of that nature. Since it's just primarily focused on stocks and mutual funds, there's usually not a lot of bells and whistles associated with it, which makes things considerably easier for you. For instance you can figure out how to find the inception date of funds you can figure out um, how to look at those funds and find out when they were started and determine if they are 10 years old or older you will be able to judge the 10-year rate of return because once you are able to figure out that uh, a fund is older than 10 years, uh, you're, you're getting a, a more accurate average when you start filtering by 1, 3, 5, and, and 10 years. So you've, you've got that going for you. When you do start taking advantage of a 401k, you want to try... Where is my meat? Oh, there it is. I just... Oh, crap. I didn't mean to do that. I just missed it. All right. Um, you want to try to spread your money over three to five funds within your 401k. You want to... Uh, you want to avoid singular stocks, singular bonds, singular... Uh, if it offers CDs, things of that nature, you want to focus mainly on mutual funds because they are already diversified. You're not having to worry about then try and, trying to come up with some sort of mix on your own for your funds. They're already mixed within the mutual fund. Remember, a mutual fund invests in typically 20 to 30 different stocks or more and some other things so it, it's going to make that pro part of the process a little easier for you make it easier for you to follow the age-old advice of diversifying within your investments okay you don't want to necessarily take advantage of the default investment that they will offer you when you first sign up for your 401k or 403b Typically, those funds are just based on your age. They say, oh, you're 30, so you've got 30 years at least until your retirement age. And so they're set up uh, in a way uh, to try and help you maximize that. But usually they're not quite as aggressive as some of the other funds. And by aggressive, I mean they don't tend to return quite as well as some of the other options that you might have available to you. When you're young, 
you can be aggressive and you should be aggressive. That's when you should be taking some risk, taking some chances. Uh, with mutual funds, uh, the, the risk is about as minimized as it can be. And yet your potential for gains are extremely good. All right. Um... Uh, you also will be, if you're investing in a 401k, you also will by default be dollar cost averaging. I don't know if you're very familiar with that term, but instead of trying to time the market, one of the way to maximize gains and get the best rate of return is to dollar cost average. Dump some money in each week. Uh, out of your paycheck. Well, that's automatically being done if you're contributing to a 401k. That's how they naturally work. And so you're not worried about the peaks and valleys. You're just worrying about staking, staying consistent. And you will find that you will do much better than the, on average than people that do try to time the market. Now, whenever it comes to 401ks, people always talk about maximizing the company match. And I want to decode that a little bit for you because that's another of those scary, foreign-sounding things that can come about. So the company match is extra money that they give to you. To It's a way to try to draw in new employees. It's a way to try to retain employees. It's an additional benefit that a lot of people don't take advantage of because A, they don't contribute to their 401k, and B, when they do contribute, they don't contribute enough to quote unquote maximize the company match. The company match is usually put in terms of we'll match 50 cents on the dollar up to a maximum of 5% of your pay. That's, that's typically how that goes. Well, what that means is their, your contributions, your investments, oh, I got turned around. You're calculating that in terms of your weekly paycheck. If your weekly paycheck is $100, 5% of that, of course, would be $5, right? Well, the company is telling you that they're going to match 50 cents on the dollar up to a maximum of 5%. So if you put in that $5, the company will put in an extra $2.50 on top of that. So altogether in your 401k, you're going to have $7.50 for that week. That's what that means. Hopefully I've simplified that enough. Okay. Now, if you contribute 6%, so if you were putting in $6, well, the company is still only going to give you that $2.50. Okay. That's what it means up to a maximum of 5%. Now, along with company matches, there's also something called... Ooh, there was a bird's nest. There's also something called vesting. And that's another scary foreign term, but it's not really that big of a deal. Okay, as I've mentioned, the whole 401k thing is an incentive to try and draw in and keep new employees. So, they want to make sure that you're going to stick around a little while. And that's what vesting helps with. So they're saying that, all right, we've put this money in, but if you leave this job, you're, we're not giving you that company match portion. We're only giving you the bit that you contributed, okay? And so that's where that part is coming into play. Now, vesting varies from company to company. It depends on what kind of turnover they typically expect and what kind of challenges, uh, what kind of position you were in, whether it was salaried or hourly. Obviously, they tend to want to keep their salaried people longer. They know that they're going to have turnover with their hourly employees. So, usually the, there will be... A, a variance there it'll be a little shorter for hourly people a little longer for salaried people that's all that means and so they'll say all right uh, you'll be fully vested after two years or we'll have a graduated vesting scale every six months you're 25 percent invested and after two years you're fully invested 
That's what that means. That means if you were to leave, then uh, the, as far as the company match goes, if you were there only six months, well, then you're only getting 25% of what the company put into it. All right. In your 401k, just some final thoughts. In your 401k or 403b, uh, you want to invest enough to maximize that company match and then invest in a Roth outside of work. Remember, your retirement, depending on what your retirement goal, your retirement savings should be 10 to 20% of your income. I thought there was one more guy over here that I wanted to go ahead and get. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, so uh, typically, if you're maximizing the match to work, you're only investing, based on the previous example, 5%. you got another 15% that you've got to do on your own. And something else, too, they've started doing lately is they've started clouding the issue a bit, trying to say, oh, you can have a Roth within your 401k. There it is. You really don't want to do that because that that's going to create... Uh, some confusion for you and some difficulty later on. Just take advantage of the, the tax benefits of just the 401k by itself. Keep your Roth separate. Don't do a Roth within your 401k. Do a Roth outside of your 401k. All right, guys, uh, let's see. Oh, as far as that vesting is concerned, that might be a negotiating point if you do change jobs. If somebody else is offering you uh, uh, better income, better benefits, whatever, to try and entice you to change, then don't forget to take that into account. Hey, I'm not fully invested in my 401k at work. If I leave, I'm going to lose out on roughly $2,000. Uh, can you help make up that $2,000 difference for me? So... Uh, so that this is truly a gain for me and I'm not being penalized. Something that might come up uh, as you're making your way through the interview process of trying to settle on uh, wages and benefits and things. Now, if you leave your job, do not liquidate your 401k. Do not take a cash payment or a cash payout from it. A, you can leave your money in your 401k. You could just leave it in your account and it will, and you could still make moves within your account and watch it continue to grow. Or B, you could potentially roll it over into your new 401k that you're going to get with your new company. If you talk to the, the account, whoever's servicing that account, they can help walk you through that process. The reason I say that is if you take that cash payout, if you liquidate your 401k, well, then you're going to get hit with taxes and penalties if you do it before your age 59 and a half. So uh, any gains are going to get gobbled up because of those penalties, and you aren't going to get those it's, it's called a penalty for a reason. You're, you're just going to lose those funds. The government's going to keep it. Remember, the government gives tax incentives to encourage people to invest, and they want you to keep those investments in place. They don't want you uh, taking them out before your retirement age. So uh, that's something to factor into there. You can roll them over. All right, guys, that is a lot of ground that we have covered on 401ks. There's probably some more that could be said, but if you've got questions, if you're changing jobs, if you uh, are in a situation where you're having to choose between some funds and aren't sure which way really to go, well, then hit me up. These are the questions that I really like to answer and help you guys with. It's fun for me, okay? And if I don't have the answer, I'll try and track it down for you. But what you can do is you can hit me with those at fustyandfinance at gmail.com. As always, you can leave it in the comments below the video, or you can reach out to me sometime when you see that I'm streaming and hit me with them then.